this is Scratch Power. On today's tutorial for the Black Ops 2 Zombie Map Origins, I'm going to show you how to change your Thunderfist Melee upgrade, which is a one-punch kill through round 19, to Iron Fists, which is a one-punch kill until round 37. This is the most powerful melee upgrade in any Call of Duty Zombie Map, with a Golden Sport coming in a close second. First, I'd like to provide you with a general outline of the steps we're going to take to get our Iron Fist. Now, some of these steps, like release the horde or skewer the winged beast, may not make sense at first, but we're going to cover each step in detail. A step you have to have done before you take these steps is upgrade each of the four elemental staffs. There's just not enough room in this video to include all that information. However, I do have other tutorials on how to upgrade some of those staffs. I'll include the links below in the description. Now, to upgrade to Iron Fist, obviously, you need to get your Thunder Fist. If you're not sure how to do that, we'll briefly cover that here in just a second. Once you have those two things done, the first thing we need to do is put each of the upgraded staffs in their respective pedestals. Then we'll need to obtain G-Strike Tactical Grenades, like an upgraded monkey bomb. When we have them, we can hit the big red button to weaponize the robots and use the G-Strike grenades to mark a target, a hidden portal off of the map. Once we designate that target, the robots will rain fire and bust open that hidden portal where we can unleash the horde. We'll spawn six Panzer Soledats, which we will have to kill before we can go on to the next step, which is Skewer the Winged Beast. We'll have to locate and shoot down the Red Baron who's visible only when you're in zombie blood mode then once he's on the ground we'll have to kill him in zombie blood mode again but once that's done we'll be able to do the last step we'll have to go to the bottom of the excavation site and kill certain zombies with glowing fists once you kill enough of them you get your iron fists and you have a one hit kill until round 37 so let's get started before we get into the tutorial, you need to make sure you have your first melee upgrade, the one inch punch or thunder fists. To get the first melee upgrade, you'll need to charge up four chests located throughout the map by killing so many zombies near each one of them. Once all four are charged, you can go to the Rituals of the Ancients chest and you'll be rewarded with your first melee upgrade in the form of a glowing energy ball. The Thunder Fist allows you to punch zombies with a powerful force, causing zombies to fly away, similar to the Thunder Gun from Black Ops 1. And just in case you've never done this before, I'm going to show you where each of those chests are. This one is behind Juggernaut. Now, you have to kill zombies while they're in the robot's footstep. The second box is over here near the excavation site. Also, while you're filling each one of these chests, keep an eye out for the robot. You don't want him to come and kill you. Also, if he steps on the box before you have it completely charged, you have to start all over again from scratch with that chest. The third box is over here on the stamina up side of Generator 5. And the last box is in front of the church. Also, you can fill the boxes in any order. It doesn't matter which one you start with and which one you end with. In this example, we've already got three of the other boxes charged, and this is the last one we're filling. Once you have all four boxes charged, it'll close up and you'll hear an audio cue. You'll also see a little icon at the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Simply go to the Rituals of the Ancients box, aim at the bottom symbol to tell the box what you want, and hold the action button. There's your reward in the form of an energy ball. You now have your Thunder Fists. Now we can begin the seven steps that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Whenever you've upgraded all four elemental staffs, a staff pedestal will appear in each of the three robots, with a fourth staff pedestal appearing at the bottom of the excavation site. You will need to put each staff in its respective pedestal. The three robots named Freya, Odin, and Thor hold the ice, wind, and lightning staff respectively. The robot on the left near the church, Freya, will hold the ice staff. Then the robot in the middle, Odin, will hold the wind staff. And finally, the robot Thor at the bottom will hold the lightning staff. In case you don't know, the way you access the robot is through its feet. One of the robot's two feet should have a doorway like this that you can shoot open. 
You stand underneath and let him step on you to get inside the control room of the robot. The other foot? Nothing. You go under it and you die. <laughs> Unless you've used the golden shovel to get a helmet. <laughs> now my friend Matt is going to demonstrate how we actually get into the robot without dying. And he's going to put the lightning staff inside Thor. You can tell his name's Thor because it's up there at the top. He walks up to the pedestal, holds the action button, and voila. Now, Bam Bam has the wind staff, so he's going to put it in the foot of the center robot, Odin. And also, he's going to demonstrate how you can kill a bunch of zombies. <laughs> the thing is, if you're trying to do all three robots to get these stabs in here, make sure you don't have the last zombie with you, or it's going to end the round. It'll crush him. Now he walks up to the pedestal, holds the action button, and there's the wind staff. Finally, since I have the ice staff, I'm at the church trying to get in that robot. I shoot the foot, let him stomp me, and up into the control panel, which is in the head, I go. I walk up to that pedestal, hold the action button. Now we have three staffs and three robots. The last pedestal is for the fire staff in the bottom of the excavation site. Once you put it in here, all the staffs will reappear in their proper pedestals and you can pick them back up. However, make sure all six generators are on when you do this. Also, I thought it interesting uh, when you're in zombie mode, it has this word uh, firm. It may mean fire just to let you know it's supposed to go in there since it doesn't have a name like Odin or Thor. But uh, yeah, if you don't have the generators on, that's what happens. It just sits there and you don't get your other stabs back. So make sure you have those generators on when you do this and you'll get each of the stabs back. Now the moment you do this successfully, the pedestals and the robots disappear and this wonderful little red button appears on the counter. It's actually not a big red button, it's an itty bitty red button. But right there it is. You hit it by holding the action button. But we're not ready to do that yet. We need our upgraded monkey bombs. This is what they do. They act as a homing beacon for the robots, which launch artillery and blow them up. Now, if you were to uh, throw one of these downstairs in the crazy place or at the bottom of the excavation site, uh, it won't damage them. But they all will be drawn to it, which can be advantageous. Now, to get these, you'll need to pick up a stone from this table in the tank station and take it to the second floor of the church. Hold the action button to put it in the holy water where well, you'll need to cleanse the stone by killing zombies in this area. Now, if you have your thunder fists, you can just, uh, you know, punch the heck out of them and every time you kill one, a stream of yellow smoke goes into cleaning the stone. However, this is not the only way that you can clean the stone. It's not a thunder punch kill. It's a melee kill. You can use the melee ability on an upgraded staff. Or my favorite, you can just bash the hell out of them with a riot shield. <laughs> Which means you can do this step before you do any of the others. You can do this before you even have your thunder fist or an upgraded staff. Now, after you get your stone clean, you'll need to walk up to the holy water, hold the action button, and pick it up. You can tell when it's clean because it'll change colors, like this. Now, you will have to carefully carry it back down to the tank station without stepping in the mud, without getting it dirty. And be careful, if you do, she'll get on your ass and... Start over! <laughs> yeah, you'll have to go back and hold the action button to clean it, she gripes again, and uh, here we go again. Wow, I actually got two zombie bloods. You don't have to have zombie blood to do this, but here's the path I take to get down there. You just carefully go this way. You can hop if you want to, but uh, that part there in the footstep and the one ahead of me are the two trickiest spots. Now, once you're at this part, it's you're pretty much home free. So you go down to the tank station, walk up to the table where you got the stone, and hold the action button. Now, down here, you'll need to get more melee kills. And once you get enough, you get your upgraded monkey bombs. So just keep checking that table. They'll appear on there when you get them. 
just walk up to the table and hit X. Now you have your upgraded monkey bombs. Now, be advised, if you die and come back the next round, you can't repeat the process to get them back. However, you can, if you get lucky, get them back out of the mystery box. Now I'm over here at Generator 5 where this portal is located off of the map trying to figure out which one of these three robots has an open foot so my teammate can get up there and hit the red button. This can take a while. You need to time it well. As soon as they hit the red button, you'll need to throw one of these upgraded monkey bombs over here to this uh, sealed portal that's off the map. The upgraded monkey bomb acts as a homing beacon and they will blast the crap out of it. If you do it right, it will open this portal. Oh, and while I'm at it, you have to hit these things pretty accurately. Not perfectly dead center, but it needs definitely to be on it or uh, a lot of times it will bust it open. And that should do the trick. Now the portal's open, but the problem is we can't get to it. Well, it's a good thing we have a brain in a jar. We can't get in there, but Maxis can. Now, be ready. When you let the Maxis drone go right here, it's going to spawn six Panzer Soledats. Like this. Just make sure you have the fire staff handy or whatever you like to kill them with. Once you've killed all six Panzer Soldats, you're ready for the next to last step. Skewered the Winged Beast. Basically, you'll need to shoot down the Red Baron's plane and kill the Red Baron when he's on the ground. You cannot see him or his plane unless you're in zombie blood mode. Just like shooting down the plane to get the red staff here, it's highlighted in yellow. So it's a little bit harder to see, but you can still see him and uh, hear him, although he makes a slightly different sound. Here's a picture of what it actually looks like when you're trying to shoot it down. Now, I've played with different friends and a lot of times some of them will say, I can't see it, I can't see it, and lose the zombie blood and not shoot it down. This is one of the reasons you save the zombie blood at the original spawn. You can shoot the plane down and kill him in one zombie blood, but it's very rare. When you shoot down the plane, the Red Baron will fall to the excavation site. And as you can see, there's no way I'll make it in time. But that's not a problem because we can create one more zombie blood with the eye staff up here at the excavation site. That gives us more time to find and kill him. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Once you get the zombie blood, you're going to run down from the excavation site counterclockwise because the Red Baron consistently runs around the excavation site in a clockwise direction. So eventually you should run into him. Here, let me uh, show you. I'm down here. I don't know if you can hear this, but I can hear him. It's very, very important not to try to kill him if you're not in zombie blood mode. If you try to do a charge shot with one of the elemental staffs, sometimes he'll just go away and glitch and you'll never get further. I don't know what it is, but make sure you're in zombie blood mode. So let's go ahead and create the zombie blood. To do so, you'll need to uh, put these flames out in three different wagons. You have to use the eye staff to do it. You don't have to use a charge shot to do it, but uh, you have to get kind of close. Once I have all three flames out in the wagons, I can go back up and the zombie blood will appear in the same place I just showed you. The catch is you can only do it once in a round, so you want to make that zombie blood count. Now, to make this easier, my teammate Bam Bam is following the Red Baron. He can hear him, so by the time I get up here and get the zombie blood, he tells me exactly where he is, so I know where to go in time to be able to kill him. Bam Bam has told me that he is running in front of the excavation site in the robot's footsteps. 
I know he's running clockwise, so I run counterclockwise, and eventually I run into him and shoot him. Once he's dead, he'll drop the Maxis drone, and you're ready for the final step. Uh, some people say this is an upgraded version of the Maxis drone that you get, but I'm not positive about that. And now the final step. You go to the bottom of the excavation site and start a new round. You'll see zombies heading towards you with glowing fists. You need to uh, melee kill maybe 20 or so of them and uh, then you will get your iron fist. Also because I'm holding the fire staff while I'm upgrading my melee, my iron fist punch will have a fire element to it. And there's the stone. When I grab it, I'll see white light, do a kung fu move. I now have the iron fists. As you can see, I set that one on fire. Now, you see this light right here? That is someone else getting their iron fists. But whenever you get yours, you'll have that uh, tablet in the middle of that light, like this. Now basically you're free to run around and punch the crap out of them. Uh, one punch kill until round 37. <laughs> now um, the early rounds you can punch a group of them and they'll just drop. But as, as the rounds progresses uh, the group won't be taken out as easily. Here we're on uh, round 34. It's still a one punch kill but um, you know they're slowly getting more resistant to it. Now, when you're on the last round where it's a one-punch kill, round 36, uh, they'll still drop, but uh, it takes a little longer for them to get well done. Watch them. They'll sizzle there for a minute, and then drop. <laughs> that still doesn't mean they're not effective. Now we're on round 39, and as long as you make sure no one sneak up behind you, you can still take him out with two punches quite effectively. I'd like to thank Bam Bam and Matt for helping me make the video and be nice for letting me know that you can beat the crap out of them with the riot shield while you're trying to get your upgraded monkey bombs. In round 45 I die. So this is the perfect opportunity to show you what the different elemental effect is on your iron fist if you're holding like the lightning staff when you get the upgrade. Thanks for watching the video, and leave a comment if you can. I always want to know what you think. You don't have to agree with me or anyone else, but your feedback is helpful. Until next time, this is Crash Power.